This is Plus Reports, a roundup of the reports that made the news. I'm Jacinta Obuku. Dozens of tertiary institution students under the ages of the National Association of Nigerian Students, Zone D, are protesting in Lagos over hike and electricity tariff and petrol price in the country. A similar protest also held in Oshun, Ondo, Oyo and Ogun State on Tuesday. The students gathered in their hundreds at a different state capital. The spokesperson of the association, Kazim Israel, says that the hike in the price of petrol and electricity tariff is anti-people. One of the protesters in Ojota, Lagos, says that the reason for the protest is to ensure President Mohamed Bouhari revises the recent hike. Enough is enough. We should not keep mute at this time of the day. The atmosphere is not conducive for the decision taken by the federal government by increasing the fuel price at the same time the tariff in electricity. The atmosphere is not conducive. It's a wrong decision taken at the wrong time. The, 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 the offered us 30,000 as many and they are now taking 40,000 euro back. So it's uncalled for. It's for not happy, and that they must immediately reverse it, or else there will be mass action, or else there will be mass action against the government. And if President Buhari knows that he does not want to increase, to reduce the pump price of petrol, he should resign. If he knows he's not longer capable, if he's no longer capable, let him resign. That is why we are here. I hear this morning to say no to fuel price increment. We are here this morning to say no to, uh, to, to electricity bill tariff. We say no to increment in all other food item commodity in Nigeria. We are here to condemn it and to tell the federal government to revert the price of the fuel back to the normal status quo, which we know 145 naira. Within seven days from now, oh yes, there are going to be a mass protest all over the country. We are giving them, we are giving the federal government seven days ultimatum from our hand here, from south west. We are giving them seven days ultimatum. If nothing is done, we are shutting down. We are having total shutdown of Nigeria economy. The federal government has called for understanding over the removal of fuel subsidy following a loss in revenues. The Minister of Information, Culture and Tourism, Lai Mohammed, while speaking to newsmen in Abuja, says that's part of the increase in the cost of petrol. Nigeria still retains the lowest cost of petrol within the sub-region. Mohammed says the federal government has expanded about 10.413 uh, trillion naira for subsidizing fuel between the year 2006 and 2019 and approximately 743 billion naira yearly. The truth of the matter is that subsidizing fuel is no longer feasible, especially under the prevailing economic conditions in the country. The government simply can no longer afford for a subsidy. As revenues and foreign exchange earnings are falling by almost 60% due to the downturn in the fortunes of the oil sector. The Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, says he returned to the subsidy regime, which has gulped almost 1.5 trillion naira in the last three years, will be disastrous for the nation. The government is not unmindful of the pains associated with higher fuel prices at this time. That is why we will continue to seek ways to cushion the pains, especially for the most vulnerable Nigerians. With 60% less revenues today, we cannot afford the cost. The second danger is the potential return of fuel queues, which has thankfully become a thing of the past under this administration. The days in which Nigerians queue for hours and days just to buy petrol, often at very high prices, are gone for good. Of course, there is also no provision for first subsidy in the revised 2020 budget. The Minister of Information also cleared the air on estimated billing by electricity distribution companies and tariff increase by the federal government, saying not all Nigerians will be affected. Only customers with guaranteed minimum of 12 hours of electricity per day can have their tariff adjusted. Those who get less than 12 hours supply will experience no increase. This is the largest group of customers. NRC 
will also strictly enforce the capping regulation to ensure that unmetered customers are not charged beyond the metered customers in the neighborhood. In other words, there will be no more estimated billings. Amadin Uyi, Plus TV Africa. Meanwhile, the Petroleum Products and Pricing Regulatory Agency, PPPRA, says it will remain as the sole regulator of Nigeria's downstream sector. The General Manager of Human Resources of the agency, Victor Shadok, spoke to a newsman in Abuja saying that although the agency has relinquished its role as a price regulator of the pump price of petrol, it remains committed to ensuring that marketers do not capitalize on the removal of subsidy to fleece Nigerians. PPRA remain the regulator in the downstream, and I told we have a code of conduct, we monitor the activities of all the operators. And the difference now is that we do not indicate this is the price that you must sell, because if you do that, it is price fixing. But what the PPR do, as is everywhere, you want to see the trend in the market when somebody is going beyond a bank. You pull the trigger and say, hey, that price that you're trying to change, charge is outside what's up to be. Because the regulator must always protect the interests of the consumer. And this allowed instances of profiteering. PPMC is a marketer. PPMC, when they bring their products, they are just like traders. As a trader, people buy in bulk from them. If I'm selling a book, I don't sell it beyond a price that I know I'm going to cure losses. All of us are aware that under the regulated regime, there's no subsidy. And NMP and PPMC is not there want to give products to people at the cost that they will not be able to cover. Imo State Governor Hopu Zodima has flagged off Imo State mass transit service for civil servants in the state. The 30 mass transit buses, according to the governors, shall help reduce the difficulties faced by Imo civil servants by conveying them from various locations to office to and fro at no cost. Speaking during the flagged off ceremony, Uzadema said the gesture is part of his commitment to ensure he gets the civil service right, as it is the engine of every government. He stressed that his determination to sanitize the fraud and civil service was to ensure every real worker get their salary as at one due. The governor also gave out Prado jeeps and Hilux vehicle to political appointees to enable carry out their functions. Conscious of the fact that when the citadel of justice is corrupt, the body politics is rotten. I saw the civil service as the engine room of any meaningful administration. If you get the civil service right, then you are sure of a good government. Ignore the civil service, then there is no government. I'm aware that no matter how bad the situation is, there are always beneficiaries who will want the situation to remain the same. So when I discovered the huge fraud in our payroll system and how our payroll system has become a drain pipe to government revenue, and knowing that without money, no government. The Joint Action Front, GAF, or your state chapter in coalition of the pro labor socialist oriented civil service organization partnership under labor and civil society coalition with the Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, have expressed its displeasure in the recent hike in pump price of petrol, electricity tariff, VAT, and other policies of the Buari led government. Except these new barrages of Ike, the public utilities is defeated. There's every likelihood that it will lead to increase in mass unemployment as well as many small scale businesses will collapse with tendency for an increase in crime rate under related social vices in the country. The vassal of the Ike in the price of petrol, let this arrive and VAT at least to the pre 2016 prices. This means, for instance, that the pump price of petrol should be reversed to 7 naira per liter. 
Chairman Nigerian Labour Congress or your state chapter, Olukayo De Martins, said the COVID-19 financial crisis facing the country has affected the low income and the middle class citizens and urged government and every stakeholders to stand against the surge in price of petrol and electricity tariff. Let every one of us cry out now. Let them know if they remain insensitive to our plight. Let them know we are no more mumu. I respect the law and the constitution of my country. In as much it respects the interest of the people. If it goes against the interest of the people, I'm against such. I don't mind whatever the consequence. The Pension Transition Arrangement Directorate Pitard says it has paid about 96 billion naira to pensioners in the last one year. The Executive Secretary of the Commission, Dr. Choma Ejikeme, while briefing newsmen of the achievement of the Commission in the last one year, says Pitad is committed to resolving every dispute arising from payment of pensions and gratuities. Our correspondent, Amadin Oye, reports. The Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, Pitad, was established in August 2013 in compliance with the Repealed Pension Act of 2004 which was re-enacted in the Pension Reform Act of 2014. PITAD was established to solve the problem of ghost pensioners, a lack of proper pension database, and the resolution of pension areas, which had caused untold hardship on Nigeria's elderly citizens. However, seven years down the line, many Nigerians are still confused on their actual responsibilities of the directorate. PITAD is just an engine room for carrying out the mandates of the government concerning pensioners. PITAD does not create salary structures. PITAD does not come up with any pension cycles. Some pensioners admit that their challenges still abound despite efforts of the directory to live up to his responsibilities. It have been over for some time now, been complaining of uh, low pension rates. We have taken our case to salary, national salaries and wages, uh, wages and income, national salaries, incomes and wages commission. At this press conference in Abuja, the executive secretary of PITAD says the last one year has seen the directorate this bus funds to the tune of almost 100 billion naira to solve problems arising from the payment of pensions and gratuities. Between July of 2019 and August of 2020, PITAD paid a total of over 96 billion naira to pensioners across all the operational departments. The sum of over 77 billion was paid as monthly pensions payments to 244,643 pensioners as of July 2020, 19 billion, over 19 billion was paid to 87,842 pensioners in the form of arrears and gratuities, and the sum of over 670 million was paid to 418 next of kings of deceased pensioners. Pitard also adds that it has embarked on a war against corruption. The directorate says about 44 billion naira of unremitted assets remains in the hands of pension underwriters. The executive secretary of the directorate, Dr. Chioma Ejikeme, says that it is necessary to recover these assets for the sake of Nigerian pensioners. Pitard is working assiduously on the recovery of legacy funds and assets in the custody of 12 insurance on the writers belonging to the default agencies. They were previously responsible for the pension payments to federal government parastatals and the universities. The directorate has filed an action under the undefended list procedure for the recovery of legacy funds and assets against four of the insurance on the writers, namely Gold Link Insurance PLC, Unique Insurance PLC, Standard Alliance Life Insurance PLC, and Niger Insurance PLC. The Directorate also assured of its commitment to solving pension challenges of all civil and public servants before the end of 2020. Amadin Uyi, 
Plus TV Africa. You're watching Plus Reports on Plus TV Africa. We'll be right back after this break.